Me too. Welcome to Journey to Point B. I'm so excited to have you here today. Excited to be here. It's good to be here with you. Before we start digging into your journey to point B, which is writing a book quite early Mm -hmm. in your life, I was wondering if you can give me three pieces of information about you that would help me better understand Mm -hmm. the person that I'm interviewing today. Yeah, for sure. So I think one of the things, like you mentioned, is me being a little bit on the younger side. So I'm 16. I'm a high school junior uh, living in North Texas. So I guess that's one. Uh, The second thing would be that I love to write. So, you know, just in general, I like to write short stories or, you know, things about myself, things about my friends, um, news kind of uh, reports, uh, journals, all sorts of things, right? So that, that really played a big part in kind of my journey to point B. And then I think the last thing, and this is especially pertinent to us today, but politics is something that I've been getting into uh, since since about middle school. And it's just something that I've gotten the chance to be really involved with. So that's something else that we're gonna be touching on. That's quite amazing. So the book that you wrote, I saw that it's a Mm -hmm. book about about politics. And I was wondering, mm-hmm. Mitul, if you can uh, tell me a little bit about your book and what was what was the motivation? Like, how did you get started to even have the idea of writing a book? So I think the motivation actually explains like where the book led to a little bit better. Because uh, when I started, um, I wasn't exactly sure of what my finished product would look like, right? I just knew what I wanted to do. And kind of my uh, impetus to write the book started with a kind of summer job that I had at a uh, kind of local uh, kind of political leader's office. Uh, And, you know, they had a lot of different books for different kinds of people about specific issues and that kind of stuff. But the one thing that I couldn't find, uh, and this was super important to me because I wanted a book for kids, I couldn't find a book that was specifically geared towards kids and that gave a general synopsis of you know where american politics are today what that means for us in a way that's appealing to kids and so that that's something that i noticed kind of just from working in a political environment and then kind of moving past that uh, some of the effects of that that i've seen uh, is especially with my younger brother and other kids uh, that you know I'm friends with or uh, I'm related to, there's just a general lack of understanding when it comes to a lot of the different issues that you see debated. So I wanted to take my experience uh, kind of working in that political environment and apply it to a book. And that's, that's kind of where I started taking things. But the catch is when I started, I didn't really know I wanted to write a book per se, right? All I knew is I want to share what I know about politics and why it matters to us, most specifically kids, uh, in a way that's accessible to everyone, right? And that kind of slowly morphed into a book as I started looking at different avenues through which to kind of pursue mm. that. So why, why does it matter? especially for the young generation? Why do politics matter? I think with younger kids especially, uh, to me it's been less about the specific issues, being knowledgeable, which in and of itself I think is important. Uh, But I also think that it's about not being Mm -hmm. apathetic, right? There's a lot of apathy uh, that I see, that I've seen, Uh, kind of pervade different cliques at school and all different sorts of environments that kids inhabit. And I think that apathy, more than anything else, is what spurred me to write a book, right? It was was less about, oh, we need to get kids politically involved. And there are a lot of people who who advocate for that, you know, lowering the voting age. Uh, This wasn't that per se. I just wanted kids to know 
that if they want a place in politics or if they want to care, they can do that uh, without it being necessarily a bad thing. So it was it was more kind of just about uh, spreading my my viewpoint on that and sharing that mm -hmm. with other people. Where do you see yourself playing a role in politics? I think for now, uh, it's a lot of campaign work, especially people who want to end up in politics, you know, end up on the Hill. They sometimes forget, I think, about the nitty gritty of what it actually means to get into politics. And campaign work is just something that really appeals to me because uh, it's it's building something up, right? You're building an organization, uh, you're building up a team, and that's something that I want to involve myself in. Eventually, you know, I, I hope to, uh, you know, again get involved and run for office somewhere down the line. But that that isn't really a goal that I'm burdening myself with just yet. Mm -hmm. I want to see where kind of the campaign community organizing type work takes me. That's wonderful. We need more more people mm -hmm. like you. <laughs> so coming back to your book, writing your book, what mm -hmm. were some of the significant milestones that played a role in you mm -hmm. completing this project? So the first and biggest thing that really kind of stuck out to me was me actually deciding to mm -hmm. write a book, right? And I mentioned how I wasn't sure that that's what I wanted to do, right? I just wanted to spread awareness in some way, shape, or form. But when I decided to actually tie that intangible type goal to more tangible finished product, I saw my productivity, whoop, like it just, it shot through the roof when it came to what I was working on. So that was... I think the most important milestone. And then, you know, there were different kind of parts along the way uh, that mattered to me and kind of showed me that I was on the right path. But I'd say that the second most important milestone kind of for writing a book in particular is the halfway point, right? Because when you get to, and, and you typically plan these things out you know, before you write them, right? So you know how long your book's going to be, or you know how many chapters it's going to have. When you get to that halfway page or that halfway chapter, it's a sense of relief because you've realized, okay, I've done most of the work already. Now I just need to finish, mm -hmm. right? And that is so much easier than starting on page one and thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with this, right? So it's it's a lot of different moving parts, especially when it comes to a project like writing a book. But those two kind of keystone, uh, like mile markers, starting and then the halfway point, really helped get me to point mm -hmm. B at the end. What were some of the things that helped you keep yourself motivated? I know that it takes a lot of, of self-discipline mm -hmm. to be able to write a book. Mm -hmm. to be able to come back to writing on a regular basis. What is something that supported you in that middle? So I think, and I like that you mentioned motivation because it's not just for books, right? Any goal, anything that you're pursuing, it all really ties back to how committed you are to whatever you want to achieve. And especially for writing, um, this, this isn't just from my experience writing the book, it's just writing in general. It can be really hard to come back to, to writing, especially after you've had uh, kind of you know a bad last day when you were trying to write and you couldn't get anything out. It's like, okay, am I really gonna be able to be productive today or am I just gonna waste my time in front of my computer, right? But I think what really helped me, and I started this about a third of the way into my process, is kind of page markers, mm -hmm. right? So I told myself every day, right? Or every other day, every day that you work on writing, you're gonna write at least two pages, right? And that, especially for writing a book, you know, on top of school and all of the other things that I was, you know, doing, that was, that was a really fast pace, right? Because writing two quality pages of anything every day, uh, just day in and day out can be really tedious. Uh, but when I set that goal for myself, I realized that because I had something tangible to 
kind of go after, I was making a lot more progress than I was prior. And I'll be honest, the writing quality of that first draft was not really up to par. But to me, I think the progress has always been more important, right? So you get the actual first draft done and then you're done with something, right? And then you can revise, then you can edit and have a second and third draft. But setting those little targets helped me get, again, that first draft, that main piece of the puzzle done. And then after that, it was all mm-hmm. done. What was the biggest challenge that you have encountered as you were going through this? Hmm, biggest challenge? You know, I actually think it's the publishing, right? For any author, it's the publishing process. Because as someone who likes to write, you you want to put your ideas on the page, right? You want to get your ideas out there. You want to revise, you want to edit. Uh, those kind of things come more naturally, right? But the more, say, business side of things uh, are a little bit, uh, you know, th- that side of things can be a little bit more confusing. And, and to me, the publishing process was completely foreign because I've never done anything like that. So when I started getting into it, I had to start with a lot of research, right? And I had to come up with a research plan. How are you going to kind of like look through all of these different publishers, self-publishers, see what is going to give you the best deal, what will give you uh, kind of the best terms uh, in terms of distribution and all that. So I had to do all of that research. And that to me, especially after writing the book and revising it and doing all that Mm -hmm. work was super debilitating. Just because I was thinking, oh, you're done with this. You finished, uh, you kind of reached your goal and I mm-hmm. had it, right? That was my biggest challenge. That last, let's say two months when I was actually trying to get the book published and kind of writing to different publishers and writing little book blurbs online, that that hurt me. And I think that the reason that I actually ended up getting it published is because I made a point to reiterate to myself that you did all of this work, you want to actually get it out there, right? And I think that, uh, I mean, they say, you know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Well, it also ends with one step. And in most cases, you don't go those thousand miles before you get tired. You get tired on mile, say, 800, right? You still have a long way to go, even after you think that you're all out of energy. And so that last stretch is is something that I'd encourage people to just focus on and kind of keep their mind on as they're working through the process, because there's always something else before you actually reach that goal that you're after. That's beautiful. A lot of wisdom there and a lot of wisdom in the way you approached writing, like getting self, self-discipline self with everything that you said, the schoolwork, the projects, I assume you're in, you know, like just looking at your your profile. I know that you're involved in so many other things, like you're the CEO of Toys for Texas. You are having a mentoring organization as well. And on top of that, you are mm-hmm. writing a book. Um, so... Mm-hmm knowing how to get a discipline and and being sensitive to this these tools that that are there this this knowledge self awareness and all that i think it's very it's a very mm-hmm. good point what would you say mitul were some opportunities that you had to notice in this process i think the biggest part of it was the work that i got the chance to do at at that political office I was mentioning, and kind of just to step back and give some context. So I got a chance to um, intern kind of through uh, a family friend uh, at a Democratic congresswoman's office down in Dallas, and then a Republican congressman's office up in McKinney, closer to where Mm -hmm. I live, right? So I was kind of given the jackpot in terms of resources on both sides of the aisle which to me, writing a nonpartisan guide was super, super important, right? So I think the main opportunity that I got a chance to take advantage of was actually trying to reach out to both of those congressional offices and seeing if uh, those uh, members of Congress or 
I, you know, some of their senior staffers would read through what I'd written mm -hmm. so that they could really make sure that it was nonpartisan, it was non-inflammatory, and that it would be helpful to kids, right? Because to me, at least, people who are leaders, right, or especially within politics, people who are elected representatives, I think do a particularly good job of making sure that the other side, right, if you're a Republican, you're going to make sure that the Democrats' influence in a project, in my case, a book, is as limited as can be. And then if you can take that and then give it to the Democrats and ask them to do the same thing, you know, you'll be able to get the most out of, of both sides just because of their competitiveness. And that's kind of what I was able to, to leverage. And then the other thing that I mentioned was just talking to friends. Most people, I think, have friends that are knowledgeable in whatever they're trying to do or whatever goal they're trying to achieve to some degree, mm -hmm. right? And just talking to friends, asking them to review uh, your work can really get you places that you wouldn't be able to get on your own just because it's a fresh perspective, right? And I think that fresh perspectives give us so much in terms of what other people actually think of our work, right? I mean, we can't actually tell, but other people can tell and they can give that to us so that we can edit and we can revise from a more uh, kind of impartial uh, point of view at the yeah. end of the day. That's very helpful and also very brave that you you did that because often mm -hmm. we are uh, concerned about hearing other people's opinion because we're so sh sure and so set and so uh, con convinced that what we're doing is exactly what needs to be out there but taking the time to really assess mm -hmm. to really have other people review it i think it's a very mm -hmm. humble and extremely helpful process I, I definitely, I, I hear you on that. Just because with so many of the different things that I've written, you know, I've I've given them to people to review and they come back with comments I don't really want to see. And I'm thinking, oh God, like, do I really need to edit all of this now? I spent days on this, right? But it's just such an important part of the process. I've never had any of my works that weren't peer reviewed do as well as my works that are just because you can't actually have a solid foundational piece of writing or anything else without someone else's perspective. And to me, just getting that perspective, in the case of the book, it was my friend in you, getting that kind of perspective from in you was so important to me because he disagreed with me on a lot of key policy issues that helped make the book more nonpartisan. But he was also another really good writer, in my opinion. So he was able to kind of critique the style and the flow of what I was putting together. And he actually sat with me and did it for almost the mm -hmm. entire book. And it's a 118 page book, right? So really having those people that you can fall back on that you won't feel kind of insulted uh, in the case that they come back with comments you don't like, I think for me was key. It was it, it really helped me get to where I got yeah. with the book. Yeah. It's, it's like receiving feedback. It is not pleasant because <laughs> when we present something yeah. uh, for feedback, oftentimes we present when we believe it's mm -hmm. complete. We believe that all it's done, mm -hmm. all, all it's needed is just the thumbs up. <laughs> and yeah. then when we receive um, not just the thumbs up, like yes, but, then it's it's mm -hmm. it's not necessarily pleasant it's not necessarily what we were looking for but it's 100 percent mm -hmm. immense growth what mm -hmm. were some lessons that you learn throughout this process that you tend to share mm -hmm. more often yeah so i think now that you bring it up this this isn't something that i've shared before but it's something that i've really incorporated into my own life and into my work uh, since publishing the book uh, it's feedback right and more specifically it's getting feedback before you get to that last step in the process. Like right now I'm writing a uh, piece for uh, Scholastic and instead of waiting until I finished the piece to get feedback on it from my friends, I kind of just wrote my first draft and then sent it to my friends. And I did that without thinking because my experience writing the book has taught me 
you don't want to wait uh, until your last step for any project, right? For any goal, for any point B that you're trying to get to, to get feedback, because no matter how humble of a person you are, you're going to get defensive and you're going to be upset, right? But if you ask people for feedback halfway through, you can save yourself a lot of time on the back end because you won't be doing work or going in a direction that uh, you might not realize, but that that kind of leads to a dead end. So that that would be, I guess, my biggest kind of technical lesson that I incorporated into my work. Um, I think the kind of moral value of what I did to me was kind of more related to uh, kind of dedication, just the dedication that it took for me to write a book, right? And this wasn't a project that I really publicized until publishing. So no one really knew what I was doing except for my parents and a couple of my friends. And they they didn't really check up uh, much about it because they didn't know where I was with the project, right? Only I did. And I didn't really have much kind of external support in that regard. And sometimes I think that that kind of stuff just happens, right? There, there are some projects that you have to embark on by yourself. There are some journeys that you have to take alone, whatever you're trying to do. Um, and really having that dedication uh, is important to getting to point B, but also to not kind of um, faltering halfway through uh, because of the length of the journey. And I think another thing, excuse me, another thing is realizing when a journey might not be suited for you. you know, some people call it giving up. I don't think it's giving up. I think it's more just being smart with your time and smart with uh, what you're doing with your time. If you know that writing a book isn't for you and it isn't something that you're passionate about, my kind of mantra has always been, you know, do the research, but if it doesn't seem like it's going to work out, don't do it, right? Because you don't want to uh, shortchange yourself and make yourself feel bad when in reality, your strengths might lie somewhere else and you could be focusing on that. I like that very much because the we're not a quitter, we're not quitters. It's so yeah. common, but often uh, that uh, that mantra can help a person going down a yeah. hole that they are not supposed to be there. And they are, as to your point, that there are so many other places where they can yeah. put their gifts to work. And okay, if you tried yeah. and it didn't work and it turns out that it's not your passion, it's okay to stop for now or pause for now and do something else. I like that mm -hmm. you br brought that up. Right. What is one lesson that you do not want to relearn? Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's, there's definitely a lot, but I think, I think the biggest thing is don't try to write in something that you're not knowledgeable or, or don't try to do something that you, you know, that you're not really, uh, able to do mm -hmm. yet right uh, for me writing the book was kind of luckily just within my kind of uh skill range in terms of you know the actual writing quality and also the structuring of it the uh kind of the publishing marketing side of it i had some experience with all of those things so i was able to to some degree be successful with my project right but um i think i'll be the first to say that uh, you know, even with writing the book, which I would I would change nothing about the process, uh, there probably would have been better things more suited to what I'm good at that I could have spent my time on. And, you know, that's okay. A lot of people do things just because, you know, it's a hobby. It's something that they like doing. I think that's what the book was for me in many ways. But if you're actually trying to make an impact, right, or if you're trying to to get somewhere or if you're trying for an end goal, uh, which not everyone is, I think that the beginning of the process, right? Deciding what exactly you're gonna do and then setting out your steps is the most important because the dedication uh, kind of like we talked about is mm -hmm. it's half of it, but the other half of it is really sitting down and being honest with yourself at the beginning of the process in terms of what do I actually need to uh, kind of make this work and if I'm not able, kind of like we just talked about, maybe maybe I should look for something else or another way about uh, of going about the mm -hmm. same goal, mm -hmm. right? 
what is one goal that you're working towards right now? A lot of those too. <laughs> Let's... What's top of mind? Uh, what, what would be top of mind? I think top of mind for me right now would be um, we're, we're actually on, on fall break here in Allen. So kind of just, you know, having fun with my friends for these five or so days before I go back to school. Because once school starts, it's kind of, uh, you know, I get down in the weeds with, with, you know, all of the different things that I'm doing. But, you know, these kind of weeks off, whether it's Thanksgiving or uh, Christmas or spring break, they, they really do help. And uh, for me, just a personal goal is, is enjoying them as much as I can. That's a very good goal, taking care of your self-care as well because we're all going for this mm -hmm. like we're often so tempted to go for these big goals professional goals growth and mm -hmm. we forget that a goal can be to enjoy a, a wonderful goal can be to enjoy uh, the uh, the life that we have so wonderful yeah it's uh you know, kind of just just commenting on that i, I really agree with you there I'm kind of frustrated sometimes uh, about the connotation of goals as kind of more of like a professional thing. They're not to me a professional thing. They shouldn't be a professional thing. Um, most people don't want written on their tombstone. I was a professional or I was a really successful profession, yeah. right? That's not what people remember. That's not what people mm -hmm. care about. And I think that really taking goals away from that professional context sometimes and applying them to our own life is what a lot of people miss in terms of success or whatever we think that yeah. means. That's very good. Yeah, the idea of mm -hmm. what would you like to have written on uh, your tombstone and live your life accordingly. Right. If anyone from the listeners would love to learn more about what you're doing, what would be the best way for them to do so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, my LinkedIn profile is Matul Gowney, and that has, uh, it's pretty up to date with everything that I'm working on, any of the kind of new projects that I might have started uh, since the recording of this episode. Uh, so if you guys want to reach out to me about those, you know, I'm always open to collaborate. Uh, I love working with, with people, and I think that LinkedIn has been a really great tool for that. In terms of my book, if you guys want to check it out, it's on Amazon. It's called One Flag, A Nonpartisan Guide to American Politics. Uh, and so it's, it's a lot of commentary. It's some kind of more informational chapters, uh, but it's only $5. So if you guys would like to check it out, uh, please, please do go ahead and look on Amazon. And that also kind of has a little bit more about me. Wonderful. And I will have those links uh, in the description as mm -hmm. well. for So for anyone who is interested to check out the books mm -hmm. or Mitul's profile, you can find them in the description as well. Mitul, it's been an honor having this conversation with you today. Thank you for taking time to share your journey and inspire us in our own journeys to point B, whether that's professional, personal, or sky's the limit. Thank you. Definitely. I love this. Thank you. Thank you. I hope this episode gave you some inspiration for reaching your goals. If you found it useful, please hit the subscribe button. This will help me bring you more inspirational stories to support your own journey to point B. Thank you.